Welcome back to the Nutrition Made Simple podcast. At Healthy Steps Nutrition, we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated, which is why we focus on a simple, habit-based approach when working with clients. We know that becoming the healthiest version of yourself isn't just about what you eat. That's why we look at a holistic approach, looking at support system, exercise, sleep, stress management, mindset, lifestyle, and of course, nutrition. My name's Nicole Coyne. I'm the registered dietitian and founder of Healthy Steps Nutrition, CrossFit HSN, and HSN Mentoring. I'm the author of the Healthy Kids Cookbook, which I wrote with my kids, 100% kid approved recipes the entire family will love. You can find it on Amazon. I am also the author of The Basics of Nutrition Coaching, CrossFit Preferred Nutrition Course. This is a standalone nutrition co- coaching course teaching people who are interested in learning more to become a nutrition coach how to use a habit-based approach and coach clients effectively and efficiently. All right, let's get to this week's episode. We are talking with Brittany, one of our registered dietitians at Healthy Steps Nutrition HQ, and also a CrossFit coach, as well as a pro athlete. She is a water skier. It is pretty incredible to see her do all of the crazy jumps and how high she gets up there. Well, as a CrossFit gym owner and someone that has coached a lot of CrossFit athletes, there are always questions regarding performance nutrition and a lot of myths about it too. In today's podcast, we are going through some of the top myths and some actionable steps that you can do to have optimal performance with nutrition. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Make sure you tune in till the end. The CrossFit Open is right around the corner, and I'm going to be giving some specific tips about fueling for the CrossFit Open. All right. Enjoy this episode, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss another episode again. Brittany, welcome to the Nutrition Made Simple podcast. I'm so excited to have you on today. Thanks, Nicole. I'm really excited as well. You are one of our dietitians at our HQ location and specifically helping a lot of athletes with performance. You have your own background with performance nutrition. Let's talk about that for a second and let our listeners get to know you. Tell me a little bit about your background. So I am a professional water skier, specifically water ski jumper. So I um, jump off of a five and a half foot ramp for distance, um, compete all over the world, have been competing since I was, I think, seven, skiing since I was three, went to college on a scholarship to water ski, which is really unique in in and of itself. Um, and then I've just continued skiing and pursuing my professional career, um, having actually the best professional career I've had this summer, um, with a handful of podium finishes, top threes, um, going to the worlds in Florida, actually in Orlando and coming seventh there. So I've, I've really utilized nutrition for myself for a very, very long time. Just super curious about what's going to what's going to dial in that detail, what's going to make things tick a little bit faster, what's going to help with recovery, what's going to make me stronger. So I've ultimately utilized um, nutrition quite a lot, obviously pursuing a career in nutrition. So it's, it's pretty special to me. That is amazing. So when did you find out about dietetics and when did you decide you wanted to become a dietitian? So in high school, um, that's whenever I got, I was serious about skiing, always had been very, very competitive. And I did other sports, soccer and basketball. Um, and I was really trying to figure out, okay, I'm serious about water skiing. What's going to take me to the next level. Um, and like I said, I was just curious about what is, what's, what's going to help me. So I started diving in. And of course, as a high schooler, I had no idea. No one talked about health. No one talked about nutrition. Of course, we had a health class, but they just talked about, you know, women's health and, you know, things to expect. And literally all they said was, okay, this is anorexia. This is bulimia. I'm like, okay, well, that doesn't help us as young women. So I did my own research. I went and I figured out, okay, this is what I need to do. And that got me really intrigued. Um, So I was just kind of figuring out, okay, I need to eat 
more. I need to eat more whole foods. I need to make sure I'm including fiber. You know, fruits and vegetables are good for me, all kinds of things like that. And luckily, like my mom was super supportive and on board with helping me because again, I was still young. I wasn't cooking all my meals, um, but it was really helpful. So I went to college and I actually did not start out in dietetics. I thought I wanted to be a speech therapist, um, but I figured out very quickly that I did not um, enjoy that. And I still kept coming back to nutrition. So my school, my college, university had a dietetics program and I thought might as well try it. People switch their majors all the time. <laughs> So let's go ahead um, and figure this out. And of course, I was still competing as a college athlete. So I was, you know, really intrigued to see what dietetics had to offer. And of course, I take my first few nutrition courses and I'm like, yep, this is it. I want to not only help myself, but I want to help people know what I didn't know, you know, and give them a better path to being healthier and just understanding food um, and nutrition in such a better light. I love that. So I have a question for you. We both were college athletes. They sent us all to a dietitian because they're like, these girls have some eating disorders and we, we need they need some help. Yeah. Did you guys get to go see a dietitian regularly as part of the water ski team? So we did not. Um, we were kind of differently categorized. Um, we were a club sport. Okay. Although we competed on a national level, we were not under the NCAA. So we actually did not receive the same, um, support as some of the other teams. And we were pretty much like self-made and motivated, um, like having to go out to the lake and ski. But I will say, um, once I got, you know, to my senior year, I got to work in house with some of the other athletes. So that was really cool to see like what the football players were doing, what the <laughs> basketball players were doing. And, um, I mean, I think we'll talk about this later, but it was just so funny to see like all the random supplements that they were adding. Like these guys and ladies had no idea what they were consuming. They're just like, okay, this is at the snack station. I'm going to eat it, you know? <laughs> oh my gosh. So I have the literally the same experience. I started volunteering at university of Florida's, um, nutrition department underneath their dietitian in college. And the amount of food those football players ate was mind blowing. And it yeah. was, we had to make all these smoothies for them and just put so much peanut butter and all the stuff in there because these guys yep. were burning so many calories and they had to be, especially the linemen. I mean, these guys were pretty, they were big guys. I, I cannot imagine right. how many calories they were eating, but it, it was quite a lot to keep up with the size that they needed to, to be. So I love that. So you, changed your major in college, decided, Hey, I want this for myself, but I also want to empower other people. Fast forward quite a few years. You are a dietitian in a hospital setting, but then you also work for us as well. You're one of our healthy steps, nutrition headquarters, dietitians, and you work with people all around the world. And one of the things we really want to focus on today is performance nutrition. You obviously have a lot of personal experience with it, but you also have experience working with quite a few athletes. And in my opinion, there's a lot of myths around performance nutrition. Would you agree? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. You have no idea how many, I mean, you probably do. You do. You surely do. The random questions. And I'm like, no, 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 let's take a step back, you know, and just really trying to almost swim through the amount of information that is out there. I mean, come on, like you Google, what do I need to eat before a workout? What do I need to do after a workout? There's just so much overwhelming information out there. You know, it just, it's nuts. <laughs> that, and then you go to social media where you have high, high level athlete, athletes saying that this powder pill supplement is the best thing ever. And the reason why they have abs, not, in, not really yeah. saying how much they're working out and the other things that they're eating besides that supplement. It's really confusing for so many people. So I want to dive into a couple super popular myths that we hear often. And the first one is really related around supplements. And I think when we talk about performance, nutrition supplements is always the next question. And I, I, do not recommend going to a supplement store because you will get sold on all of the things. But let's let's kind of dive into some of the things that you hear regarding supplements and what you recommend for your clients. 
So I, I just personally see it, um, in my gym and just, you know, in different communities, but people will be taking pre-workout. They take, you know, um, creatine, BCAAs, they take a pre-workout protein, a post-workout protein. There's, you know, and of course there's some, there's fat burners, there are all kinds of things, but supplement the the name itself is to supplement your diet. It's not to replace your diet. And I think that's where the myth really comes into play. And I think, you know, as a society, we want that instant gratification. So it's much easier to do a protein shake, but you're missing so many vital nutrients, micronutrients, the major macronutrients that you could have in a meal, a whole food meal that we talk about with our clients all the time. I mean, one of the most standard basic principles that we do discuss with our clients at HSN is the plate method. You're having vegetables, you're having a protein, and you're having a whole grain that's a whole food. So I think a lot of those those people out there could very easily fall into, okay, I could have a protein shake for breakfast, I could have um, a smoothie for lunch, and then I could have maybe one meal. Well, you're just, mi- I mean, that's two major meals you're missing really good quality. So I think it's easy to fall back into that, but it's also easy to make a really good quality meal. And then if you feel as if you're, you're not recovering as well, if that recovery after, you know, you're on a Thursday and you've worked out three or four days that week, then that's okay to add in that protein shake after your workout to make sure that you're getting that quality protein to help your muscles recover and repair after difficult workouts. Um, but it should not be the, the end all be all (laughs) to the side of nutrition. You know, I think a lot of people, and I see it all the time, which Jason, I drop into CrossFit gyms all the time and we've talked to so many CrossFit athletes and you're a trainer, you're a CrossFit trainer as well. So you're, you're in the space of the people that we, we serve. And I think a lot of times people think, well, I'm going to have a protein shake after my workout. And that's like the, the real focus. Okay. I'm going to get the best recovery after my hard workout because I had this protein shake. When in reality, we have to look at the whole day. We have to see, am I getting enough protein that my body needs for the total day, not just around my workouts? Because the thing is, if you have a protein shake, but you're not getting enough protein throughout the entire day, you're not going to be able to recover and build the muscle that you're working really hard for. So I think that's one of the lenses I see with shakes and supplements is a lot of people use that as the crutch of like, Oh, I I checked that box. I'm good. I'm going to get the best recovery after my workout because I had a protein shake and they don't really look at the whole picture of the whole day. Right. It's, it's definitely the overall picture. I mean, you can't just, you can't cherry pick your nutrition. You can't cherry pick workouts. (laughs) Um, you have to definitely be more diligent to say, okay, this is, this is how I'm going to, fuel my body leading up to the workout and then fuel it after. And then of course, like depending on when you work out, like you might have that time where you do need a little bit more protein to help you recover, or you might need less, you know, just depending on your hunger cues and, and things like that. So it's, it's not a one size fits all for sure. I love that. And I'm sure it's, it's an organic conversation in classes for us. I'm sure it is for you too. If someone's like, man, this, this workout is, is way harder than it should be. Or Nicole, I'm feeling a little lightheaded today. My first question is, well, what did you eat? How much water did you drink? Are you hydrated? And did you feel your body? And nine times out of 10, they're like, oh man, I, I forgot to have a snack or I was rushing out of the house and I didn't eat anything before my workout at HSN. We have nice little applesauce packets that we have readily available for anyone at any time that they can go in the fridge and just grab one because I want to make sure that they're, they're fueled for their workouts. And is that the perfect answer? No, but it's something which is better than nothing for sure. What are some things that you see, because you're a CrossFit trainer, what are some things that you see in classes with people in your gym regarding supplements and nutrition? Well, I coach the 5.30 a.m. Early. (laughs) Very early. Um, It's a little different because our um, population, I don't think like my 5.30 a.m.ers are as into um, the supplements, but then, you know, like I'll pop into a noon class or like an afternoon class. And I do see people like drinking the pre-workout or, you know, getting like the intro workout. 
going on. Like they have like three different shaker bottles, <laughs> the whole, the whole works. And, um, that's something interesting as far as like pre-workouts concern is you're just drinking a whole bunch of caffeine. And I think that also, I mean, there's, there's other items that go into there, but you might also not know what's in, you might not truly know what's in your, your pre-workout or your intra-workout. And I think definitely drinking something so high caffeine could surely help like motivation wise, like get your, your heart rate going and get you to have a better workout. But then that also has an effect on your sleep. And it also has an effect on your hunger to then eat those whole foods after your workout. So I think I see that a lot is like, do you really need the pre-workout or do you need to rest? You know, like what, what are you truly using that for? So I think that's the one common one I see. I think um, I don't know if there's any other ones that you see. I think that's a really good point, the pre-workout. So with CrossFit in particular, you get your heart rate up during every workout, right? Like it is guaranteed yeah. that your heart rate is going to be up. And if your resting heart rate is elevated because of the caffeine and then you're elevating your workout, you're elevating your heart rate even more during these workouts, probably not going to be the best thing for you to have optimal performance for those long workouts. If you're just doing a one rep max deadlift or something super short, okay, maybe a little bit, what might be okay. But those longer workouts where your heart rate is getting elevated throughout the entire workout, having a bunch of caffeine before is actually going to make that workout tougher for you because you're, you're already starting at an elevated elevated heart rate. So I I challenge people to consider that. And also a lot of those pre-workout supplements have a ton of caffeine, like Mm -hmm. multiple cups of coffee in one thing that you would never realize. I know we use a scent protein at ours. And I think their one serving is about one cup of coffee. Um, They're a scent uh, Mm pre-workout. Yep. 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 It's, but I, I truly believe, Hey, let's, let's rest, recover. Let's go to our workout you know, ready to work out instead of putting a ton of chemicals in our body to get us ready for this workout. Okay. Yeah. Supplements, um, whey protein, gold standard building lean muscle mass after a workout. Mm -hmm. Um, that would be the one that, that we recommend. So let's go interesting, um, trend that I've seen over the years and it was super popular for a while. And I think now it's tamed down a little bit, but let's talk about macros. If it fits your macros and, donuts after the workout, like all of the, (laughs) the stuff related to macros. So, um, if you're fit, if it fits your macros, um, is basically the breakdown of like carbohydrates, protein, and fat, and it gives you a total number of calories. Um, but I think, you know, when it's broken down, I think it gave people and, you know, it still does gives people the, the go ahead to add in, like you said, donuts. Well, donuts are carbs and it has a little bit of fat in there. Well, it fits into my carbs and, and fat. So I'm going to eat that. Or it's like, I'm going to eat a pop tart, like before my workout or after my workout, or I'm going to have some ice cream at the end of the day, or, you know, I'm going to have some pizza. It fits into my macros. Well, whenever you're doing that, you're, again, going back to the, back to the supplements, you're not providing your body with those nutrients. Like you can so easily have whole wheat bread or like some rice as those carbohydrates or like Nicole said, the applesauce before the workout, that's, it's still a whole food and you can still have something like a fat. You can still have avocado to help you reach that, you know? And I think it's so easy to just be like lazy about your nutrition, but there's also healthy, lazy ways to go about your nutrition too, that take the same amount of time, you know, like it's, it's silly. I think, you know, social media has definitely made, if it fits your macros, super popular, right? You've got a lot of athletes that do that and it kind of grew in popularity and allowed people to make it be okay to have those highly processed, highly sugar, sugary foods. There definitely is a way to, if you want to track macronutrients, to do it in a healthful way with whole foods Mm -hmm. for sure. And Liz, one of our other nutrition coaches, actually, she was logging her food in my fitness pal just to see, all right, I'm following the plate method, exactly the plate method. Is it going to be 
um, a balanced meal the way we recommend in regards to 40% carbs, 30% protein, 30% fat. And it was almost to the dot perfect. And, and I think some people think that they have to go so strict to see results when in reality, if we kept it simple and we're more consistent, you would, you would see better results longer term. And we wouldn't have this dieting yo-yo effect of, okay, I'm going to go really hard. I'm going to lose this weight. And then I'm going to go right back to my old habits and regain it. You know, I, I think with the fitting your macros for some people having those numbers and being able to see, okay, what am I eating? And is this balanced? It's really great eye opening experience for a lot of people, especially those who've never done it before because they've, they have no idea the portion sizes that they're eating. And I think on one hand, that's a really good strategy just to see. But on the other hand, I've seen too many people go down disordered eating habits because they get so obsessed with the numbers. And that is the opposite of building a solid relationship with food and healing your relationship with, with food and nutrition. So there's definitely two sides of, of the coin here with, if it fits your macros, either way, if you're going to do something like that, focus on whole foods, focus on balance Don't use it as an excuse to have all the donuts after a workout because you're going to eat broccoli and chicken the rest of the day. Like that's not going to be the the healthiest option for you. That's going to fuel your body for recovery and help you build muscle and, you know, optimal health at the end of the day, which is what we're, most people are striving for. So there's got to be a balance there. I mean, the holidays are, are, we are inside of the holidays and there's a lot of sugar and different things around. I don't want our clients to feel like they can never have anything, but have something in moderation, have a treat and then move on. I loved Liz's trick, like never miss two, right? If you go off for a meal, let's get right back on the next meal. Never miss two. So any yeah, other, perfect. any other thoughts you have about the macro craze? <laughs> Well, you know, kind of going back to the whole foods and what you're talking about with Liz and um, eating from that plate method that we really do strive to get our clients to eat from, you know, if you're eating those whole foods versus whatever that other food that might be more processed or ultra processed, you can eat more of those whole foods. I mean, who wouldn't want to eat more food, you know, and also do it in a healthful way. And again, like you're saying, that doesn't mean that you can't have some treats during the holidays, but if you're able to really stick to, you know, one thing that we know in nutrition science is fruits and vegetables are good for us, you know? So if you can stick to those more whole foods, you're not going wrong, you know? So I think that's ultimately at the end of the day, what we need to remember is those whole foods, they went out every time. I love it. All right. Let's talk about the last thing that I see often. Um, I actually saw it recently. Jason and I just got back from Tennessee and someone in the class said that they had been to the morning workout and they were in our workout because they wanted to, to learn more and they wanted to get better. So two workouts in, in one day. And I know there are definitely some athletes in our gym that will go, will go ham, but I would challenge you to ask yourself, are we actually recovering and giving our body time to rest? Cause that's such an important thing when it comes to performance and performance nutrition. Talk to me a little bit about how you work with athletes in regards to recovery and what you see, um, in practice with recovery or lack of recovery and what that does. <laughs> so I'll talk about recovery first. Um, we have a foundation that we go off of with healthy steps, nutrition and sleep is a, it's a staple. I mean, you cannot not sleep to ultimately have a better relationship with your nutrition choices, with your food. And then if you are someone that works out, that's going to help with your recovery, not only like mental clarity, but soreness, fatigue, things of that nature. And so making sure that we talk with our clients about a healthy sleep routine is going to be something that is, it's one of the things that I like to tackle first, because I think it's very easy to say you get home from work or you get home from your afternoon workout and it's five or six o'clock, seven o'clock, you eat, you try to do the laundry, you try to get the kids down to bed. And then by the time you look up, it's nine 30 and you're like, Oh shoot, I still have this, this, and this to do. And then it's 10 30. You're going to bed. 
probably 1130 because you're hanging out on your phone or watching TV and then you're waking up again at 5, 530, that's not quality sleep. Sure, you're in bed. That's not giving your body what it deserves to hop <laughs> up for the next day because we, we know that it's when we're sleeping, it, that's our time for our body to get back to baseline, specifically for our ho- hormones. I don't know how much you talk about hormones with um, clients, but leptin and ghrelin, that's our hunger hormone. That's our satiety hormone. So if you're not sleeping enough, Ultimately, it's messing up your, again, your nutrition choices and then also cortisol. That's your stress hormone. So I think, you know, whenever we're we're going to bed, like that should be our our major thought is, okay, I'm, I'm sleeping because I need to let my body rest. I need to let my body shut down, my mind shut down. And this is ultimately going to help me in the long run, um, So I do talk with clients about that because sleep is just so crucial and not only just getting the seven to eight hours, but going to sleep at the same time every night, you know, getting that circadian rhythm where it needs to be so you can get that REM sleep, you can get that deep sleep, which is ultimately that growth hormone is happening. It's being produced. Your body muscles are recovering again with the hormones. So there's just so many small details that go into sleep that I think people just push under the rug, you know? For sure. You know, I think it's interesting because a lot of people don't sleep enough, right? They don't, they're not able to recover and then they don't connect their poor food choices the next day with the fact that they didn't sleep. And we don't think clearly, like if you think about when do you have the, the, strongest food cravings, it's probably when you're stressed or you did not sleep enough the night before. And if we can help our bodies get into, force ourselves to get into a better sleep routine, it will set ourselves up for success so that we're not craving all of those foods that are probably not fueling our bodies to help us reach our goals and we're able to to recover. So I love that you brought up sleep. I think that's so important. Let's talk about recovery and the nutrition side of things, specifically with inflammation. So we know that sugar and high processed food causes inflammation. So starting to lower the amount of go back to add more whole foods in and naturally you're going to lower the amount of processed foods. You just don't eat as much processed foods if you're focusing on eating a lot of whole foods. Um, But what are some other things that you talk about in regards to fighting inflammation and recovery with nutrition? Um, One natural inflammation fighter um, is omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, So that's going to come from walnuts. That's going to come from salmon. And I think we overdo the omega-6s which is going to increase inflammation. And that's coming from our processed oils. That's coming from a lot of processed sugary foods, like you said, Nicole. So I think if we really try to work to decrease those, you know, versus a olive oil versus a vegetable oil or a processed oil is that's a way to decrease, you know, making sure you're not having, um, like oily (laughs) or saturated nuts or like peanuts versus like that walnut, that walnut's going to be your better choice if you're trying to decrease that inflammation, you know, adding salmon in once, once a week. Or if you are someone that does not like fish, that's where I would say, okay, on supplements, you know, there's exceptions to the rules, but again, supplementing is because you don't already have that in your diet. Um, but those are just a few of the ways. Um, and a lot of other good ways are going to be antioxidants. So berries, blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, those are great to add in. If you really struggle with, um, inflammation, you know, that's great to add into your breakfast. Antioxidants are, you know, coming from those berries that could be a dessert, you know, like that could be your after dinner meal. I know in our family, um, especially in the summer, we have tons of uh, fruit, watermelon, cantaloupe for dinner. You know that those have some antioxidants, but that's just such a good way to get that little sweet tooth knocked out. Um, and I think people forget about that. 
I love that. I think omega threes and supplements is definitely something that we've recommended to many clients. And if you are looking for a quality omega three supplement, we'll put one a link in the show notes for a good one that that we would recommend. But I would look for one that's specifically omega threes. And on the back, it'll say EPA and DHA. Those mm-hmm. are the omega threes. A lot of the Omega supplements have omega sixes and omega nines that are not fighting inflammation. We already get enough of those in our diet. So you really want mostly omega threes in a supplement if you're going to take a supplement because it's all about the ratio, right? Like we need to have more Mm -hmm. omega threes than we have omega sixes. And if we're getting a supplement that has more omega sixes in it or some, and we already have quite a few in our diet, we really want to just focus on those omega threes. So we talked a lot about today supplements. We talked about macros and really quality foods, and we talked about recovery. And we keep going back to the same thing regarding performance nutrition. And I think my biggest takeaway, and I'm going to ask you yours, is we have to still focus on the foundation and quality foods first before dialing in any details. And I would challenge people to really look at where are you starting from and are we focusing on on just all of the little details? Are we really putting those big marbles in first that that we need with quality and having balance first? What would you say your biggest takeaway from, from today's episode is for people that are listening? Um, I would definitely agree with you, Nicole. And to add to that is the consistency. So if you're not consistent with your intakes of you know, maybe you're already consuming a whole food diet, um, whole foods throughout the day, but you, on the weekends you're having the donuts, you're having the pizza, you're having whatever it is that are your weekend foods. Well, that's those two days, that's 30% of your week. That's a huge part. And I think whenever you're more consistent through that, you know, Saturday, Sunday, all the way through to Friday, and you're still not making those improvements, you're still not, you know, something's not improving with your performance, then you can start to see, okay, this is what I can take away. This is what I can add in, but only if you are consistent. And I think that's where people, they, they start jumping around with diets and that's when they, they start adding in the supplements Absolutely. they start doing something different, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to give it time. We have to be consistent and really stick to the foundation first. Brittany, thank you for all that you do. You bring such a, an awesome perspective with being a performance athlete, a CrossFit coach, a dietitian to help all of our performance athletes and, and many other clients that we work with. So thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you. I love it. All right. I hope you enjoyed that episode all on performance nutrition and you learned something regarding some of the crazy myths that are out there regarding performance nutrition. Remember, the supplement industry is a multi-million dollar industry. There's a lot of companies that are going to tell you if you drink this thing, you're going to have better performance. At the end of the day, we really just need to be focusing on whole foods. Well, as promised, we are going to talk about some tips for fueling for the open. So the first tip that I have for you is to focus more on what you are doing leading up to the open. So now until the open starts, not just the day of the open, meaning we want to have balanced meals. We want to make sure that we're getting enough protein and we want to make sure that we're staying hydrated. We want to fuel our bodies for optimal performance and just as important for recovery. You know, we talked a lot about protein and getting enough protein throughout the day, but we shouldn't just be focusing on protein around our workouts. We have to make sure that we're getting enough for the entire day. So make sure as we are heading into the CrossFit open season that you are fueling your body and having those balanced meals and snacks. Tip number two, don't try anything new. This is so important. You know, I think a lot of people might try to have something a little crazy or different than they normally have, and it could upset your stomach. So keep the same normal routine. All right, tip number three. This is something that will impact me. This is something that I have to focus on a lot. So normally I work out in the morning, but we have something called Friday night lights at our gym, which is so much fun um, getting and working out together in the evening. 
But the thing is, I'm not used to eating in or working out, especially that intense of a workout in the afternoon. So you want to make sure that you're fueling your body throughout the day and not having um, a too long of a gap between when your last meal is and you are working out. So make sure you're having those balanced snacks. In regards to eating before, during, right after workouts, we want to make sure that we're having protein and carbohydrates. If we have fat, it slows down digestion. We're not able to use that as energy. So keep that in mind when you are having those balanced snacks um, before and after your workout. Also make sure that you're drinking lots of water. Bring snacks with you. If your open is like ours, it ends up being a multi-hour event. So if you don't bring anything to properly recover after that workout, you could be missing out. So bring a shake, bring a Fit Aid applesauce, bring a snack with you, and then enjoy your dinner afterwards if you are doing Friday Night Lights. All right. I hope everyone has an amazing CrossFit Open season. I personally love the fact that it's only three weeks. We can go hard for three weeks and then get back to our regularly scheduled programming. Um, But I hope you have so much fun and it is a great community event for all of you guys listening. If you are doing the open and you're having those balanced snacks and you're doing all these things that we talked about today, make sure you take a picture, tag us on social media at Healthy Steps Nutrition. And also uh, you can tag me at Nicole, N-I-C-O-L-E underscore R-D underscore H-S-N. All right. We will see you back here next week. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss another episode.